I've done a lot of travel, and especially in Europe. And over the years, uh, I've always thought I've seen a lot of interesting places, but I've never realized how interesting Sicily is as far as a tour goes. Especially when you realize that this is a map of, uh, of Europe. There's 41 uh, countries that make up uh, uh, Europe. Uh, um, this yellow area is sort of the hub of Europe. Uh, France, Germany, for example, the Benelux countries, and all the other countries have a peripheral relationship. And then down in the south, you have what's referred to as the Mediterranean countries. And Sicily is right here. It's not a country. It's part of, uh, of, of Italy. But it really is kind of a country unto itself. And I hope you enjoy the presentation as much as I had putting it, uh, putting it together. Uh, this is a map that focuses on, uh, on Italy itself. Uh, technically speaking, you can look at Italy. You can really divide it into uh, two areas uh, along the, uh, the Anacona line, which cuts across Rome. You have northern Europe, I mean, uh, northern Italy, and you have uh, southern Italy. Northern Italy, much more prosperous uh, than the, the, the southern part, uh, much stronger um, um, uh, mafia influence uh, in the southern part uh, to include also uh, Sicily uh, itself. But this is where I spent all my time in August, the latter part of August, about 12 days we were uh, in, um, in country. Uh, we started off with, in the capital of the country, uh, uh, Palermo, which is located here. And then we just worked our way around. We went to Adrigento, and then we went to uh, Ragusa, we went over to Syracuse, uh, to Tania, and then we finally finished up in this area right here in the eastern part where you find Mount Etna, <clears throat> which is, by the way, uh, the uh, uh, the most active uh, volcano in all of uh, in all of Europe. I always when I give a presentation like this, uh, uh, I can always show you you know uh, a photo show, but I like to kind of put it in the context of what's going on in the country, and so that's what I tried to do. It's the largest <laughs> island in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it's separated uh, from Italy uh, by the Strait of Messina. Um, and that uh, distance between uh, Sicily and, uh, uh, and Italy, I think on the northern tip, is something like two miles, and on the southern tip, it's about uh, 10 miles, so really relatively uh, close. Uh, it's an autonomous region. Um, Italy gained its independence uh, back in the 1860s time frame. They became a republic in, uh, after World War II in 1946. And at that time, when they created this republic, they made a number of, uh, of regions autonomous, one of which was Sicily. Another one was uh, Sardinia, which is a little bit farther up the, uh, the coast of, um, of Italy. Of Italy. Uh, it's a country that has a population of about 5 million people. It represents about 9% of the population of Italy. And its capital, like I said, is uh, Palermo. Uh, which is up in the north. <clears throat> I think the thing that really amazed me about Italy is a very small country, relatively speaking, in the rest in terms of the rest of Europe, but it's a country that's got a lot of culture, a lot of diverse culture, and a lot of history in terms of foreign powers coming into the, uh, this particular island, island simply because of the geographic location that it represents within the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, like I said, a long history, uh, cultural and historical heritage uh, going back to the Phoenicians. Here you're talking about the 1250 BC time frame. There was even uh, Aborigines before that time frame that goes all the way back to 1450 uh, BC. Uh, the uh, Carthaginians came in along with the Greeks. Eventually the Romans came in, the Byzantine Christians. Uh, the Arabs, for a short period of time, I think a couple hundred years, had a foothold in Sicily as well. And then eventually the Normans came in as they, you know, ran their conquest of, uh, of Europe, especially uh, the British, uh, British Islands. It also played a significant role during World War II. Um, after the Allied forces um, were able to conquer or take uh, North Africa back from the Nazis, they used Sicily as their staging area to go into, uh, to go into uh, Europe in, um, in 1943. 
Uh, what's interesting, again, also about uh, Sicily, not only is, is heritage, but the fact that there is seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites within the country. And probably the best known are the Valley of the Temples, the Roman Villa, Mount Etna, the Greek and Roman theaters near Syracuse, the Arab uh, Norman city of uh, uh, Palermo, and the uh, Baroque town of Val di Nato. And I'll talk about each one of these in terms of slides, you know, in the, um, in the presentation. It's well known internationally for its cuisine. If you have a sweet tooth, a tooth it certainly is a place to go. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, gelato as I've traveled through Europe. But I tell you, the, the Sicilians really do a very good job of making it very, very thick and very creamy and, uh, and just very good. Uh, uh, Grianita is kind of a uh, uh, crushed ice uh, with a lemon type syrup that's put in it, into, it, it, into it and uh, considering the very very uh, hot climate of Sicily especially in the, in the May, June, July, August time frame it's really a nice, uh, a nice uh, cool uh, treat. Um, uh, Aran uh, Nietzsche is uh, kind of um, rice generally stuffed with different type of things like meats or vegetables and then it's deep fried into a ball. Uh, Casada uh, Siciliana is a um, sponge cake that's marinated in a uh, liquor sauce and sometimes they will put uh, different fruits and creams on it. Really, really nice uh, dessert. Everybody knows cannolis. Uh, wines, they're likewise well known for their wines, especially their marsala, which is kind of like a port wine, a very, very sweet wine. <coughs> Uh, they also are well known for their olives, olive oil, grapes. Uh, some people may not know, they're also very well known for their <coughs> almonds and, uh, and uh, pistachios. And, um, and you find that generally when you talk about the, the main meal, you see a lot of seafood, uh, especially uh, swordfish for example. Uh, eggplant is very, very uh, popular too along with uh, pasta type of dishes, obviously with a red sauce. Um, almost every meal that I had uh, when I was there would always start off with an antipasta, which was really a meal within itself. Sometimes it would uh, 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 serve you a, a dish that would have different antipastas, uh, antipastas in it. Other times uh, there would be different courses, uh, different, you know, one, one tray, maybe just nothing, different types of, uh, of olives, for example. Uh, uh, different types of salads and things of that nature, vegetables. Uh, but uh, certainly was you know a meal within itself, but very, very, very good. The national flag uh, symbolizes what's called the uh, Trinacria. The Trinacria is uh, basically, as you see here, this symbol here. This represents Medusa in the middle, and the three legs uh, represents the three uh, key uh, island points of, uh, uh, of Sicily. Uh, if you go back to the earlier map that I showed you, uh, Italy is kind of like a triangle representing three separate points. One of the points uh, is just, you know, uh, short, uh, is, is um, near the st uh, Strait of uh, um, uh, Messina, so consequently very, very close to, uh, to Italy itself. And that is generally referred to and this is on their, fla uh, on their fla flag, very, very symbolic of, um, of Sicily. Uh, the first area that we're going to talk about, again, a UNESCO site, is the, um, the Valley of the Temples. And the Valleys of Temples is really a very interesting uh, um, uh, historical site. Now, I've been to Greece, I've been to Athens, I've been to the Apocalypse. I thought that was phenomenal. Didn't think that any place in the world they could have temples as well-preserved and I find that that's not the case. Sicily certainly uh, um, exemplifies uh, the Greek civilization back in those days. Uh, and the reason why they call it the Temple, the Valley of the Temple, because there are in fact several temples. Now this is one that was uh, in, the, in, the, in the vicinity that was torn down when the Christians came in. The next one I'm going to show you is uh, much better preserved. I think it's nicer. Um, more structurally sound than the one in, uh, in Athens, uh, Greece. And anybody have any idea why I showed you one temple that was completely destroyed 
and now you hear this, you see this second tempo that pretty much is still intact to this day. Any idea why over time, you know, considering all the different civilizations that came in, it was never destroyed like the first temple that I showed you. The reason being is that when the Christians came in, they decided to make it into a church. <clears throat> and so they kept it pretty much in intact as far as not tearing it down. Whereas in the case of the first one, uh, they didn't see a need for it, so they basically destroyed it. How old is that? Uh, this goes back... Uh, Where, how old was that church? Oh, well, that temple that? probably goes back to the 4 BC uh, uh, time frame. 400 so it's 2400 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, these here, these are actually Christian tombs. Uh, again, showing you the influence that Christianity had in this part of the world and one reason why the temple was not, uh, was not torn down. It is just incredible when you think how old the temple is, that it is still standing upright uh, in its almost original uh, configuration. <clears throat> Another historical site is was referred to as the Roma Villa. This was kind of a, um, uh, an Italian uh, resort area, you know, for the Roman nobility. Matter of fact, uh, Sicily was considered the first providence that uh, Rome established once it started to expand outside of, uh, of Italy. And so it would be what we consider a high-end resort area today. Now this goes back to, you know, 4 AD. So that's a long time ago. And it's still fairly well reserved. It was on roughly 22 acres. And uh, it was a complex that had a bath area. And you can see the warm bath areas here. Uh, these were the, you know, were the ovens that kept, you know, uh, the different pools of water at different uh, different temperatures. And then there was a whole series of rooms uh, uh, that, that made up the complex that was used for a sort of lodging. And uh, the bigger the area, the more nobility that you had. Now this is really kind of a unique picture. Anybody have an idea what this symbolizes? This is the area that they use to dispose of their bodily waste. There's a relatively complex, you know, structure considering the time frame. Uh, because uh, not only did they have the places where you went, they had running water that went through it that, you know, drained the, the sewage away to, to some type of a holding, a holding area. Something you would not necessarily expect to find, you know, considering the, uh, uh, the time frame we're talking about. Like I said, uh, uh, it was considered a resort area. Internationally, it is considered one of the best preserved inlaid mosaic uh, artifacts dating back to the Romans. And what you're seeing right here are inlaid floors made of mos uh, mos uh, mosaic tile. And you can see, depending on the room, they have different types of design. It's just an incredible sight to, to, uh, to, to see. And there was literally 200 rooms. Um, and they had one quarter that went through the whole complex, and remember this is 22 acres, that had in mosaic the history of the Roman advance outside of Italy and other parts of the world like Africa and the Middle, and the Middle East. This is uh, Mount Etna, probably the historical site that's most, uh, that Sicily is uh, most noted uh, for. It's um, uh, the most active volcano. Uh, in uh, Europe uh, today. It uh, goes up to a height of about 10,000 uh, feet. And this gives you an idea, idea of what it looks like being on the top of a volcano looking down. And uh, the last uh, eruption, I think was, uh, I'd say in the last 10, 20 years. So it's a relatively active uh, volcano. They had a really, really mm -hmm. bad one in 1863 that did extensive damage in the, uh, uh, in the country. Uh, this is uh, a, a crater from an inactive volcano that I had the opportunity to walk down. And when you're looking down at it, it's, you know, it's really kind of exciting. You say, oh, geez, it would be nice to go down there you know, and feel like you know, what it's like. So I made that little excursion down there. And all of a sudden, you're looking up, and it's a lot higher than you realize. You say, geez, what happened if there was an eruption? Because it can happen that fast. 
Try to make it up in time. Certainly, you couldn't. But it's amazing the type of things that you think about, you know, after the fact. But it was very interesting to to go down there, and I picked up some uh, uh, some lava, and I brought it back to my grandchildren, and told them to bring them to school as a show and tell. So they got a real, you know, real kick out of that. This gives you an idea of some of the rock formations. Uh, it's because of the volcano in um, in Sicily. The Sicily has such fertile to uh, soil that has been very, very good to them as far as agricultural products go, especially as far as olives and grapes go, for example, and all types of fruits. Uh, another historical site uh, around the Syracuse area, uh, which is on the eastern side of, of Sicily, Greek theaters, and also a Roman theater. The Greek theater goes all the way back by BC. And you can see this is what it, uh, uh, an architectural design of what it probably looked at looked like back in that time, and it still is in relatively good shape. And even to this day, they have performances uh, every year in the um, in the theater. I think it uh, accommodates something like twenty to thirty thousand people, and all the chairs uh, or seating is built into the mountain that it was you know it was uh, wrapped around. <coughs> The acoustic was fantastic. Say again? The acoustic. Oh, the acoustics were phenomenal. And that, that little need for supplemental, you know, audio support. So Al is out here. Al, you unfortunately would not have a job. <laughs> <laughs> then there was the Roman theater uh, that was built a few years, you know, um, after the Romans came in. Um, and it was no nowhere near the grandeur that you would, ex that, that you would have thought, you know, considering that the, uh, the Greek theater was probably half a mile away. Um, and then we, uh, we, we started our trip in the capital, uh, uh, Palermo. And uh, it's a beautiful city. has, I think, some like, uh, 750,000 people. represents a good part of the country's population. It has a beautiful cathedral. Um, having, you know, Christian in... in, in uh, um, influence. Uh, this is the uh, the opera house. It's considered the largest opera house in all of Europe, which really surprised me for a small island to have an opera that size. This is a, a restaurant, one of the uh, the more uh, well known restaurants within Palermo, the uh, the restaurant of uh, Saint uh, uh, Francisco. Uh, this is a typical uh, alleyway. Uh, in the um, in the uh, in the city, uh, I don't care what part of the city you go, you find there's a lot of open markets. Not only as far as fresh uh, produce and vegetables go, but also fresh fish that just came in directly from the you know from the sea. You can see how extensive it is. Every type of fish that you can think of. A real specialty uh, was swordfish. It, you know, really uh, had a lot of good uh, good uh, swordfish. Uh, this gives you an idea of what their fruit market looks like. This is what's called a Sicilian cart, unique to uh, uh, a Sicily. Uh, generally handmade out of wood, and uh, either is drawn by horse or donkey. If it's in the city, it's drawn by horse. If it's in the countryside, it's generally drawn by a, a donkey, considered the main track, you know, at least back in the earlier days in the, uh, in the country. Uh, as we went through Sicily, uh, we came uh, into uh, a city uh, that had this beautiful staircase. I think of uh, if you've been to uh, uh, Italy before, you've been to the Spanish Square. Well, this is of the same magnitude, except that it's much, much steeper. There's 142 steps straight up, which, by the way, I did in fact make. And uh, it was a lot easier coming down than was, was going up. But what a panoramic <coughs> view you had you know, of the Mediterranean Sea once you got to the top. Uh, here is a, another um, um, a city that we went to uh, in NATO, one of the uh, UNESCO uh, uh, cities. And this is a, a basically an alleyway that d during the, uh, the Inferrata Flower Festival, they de just decorated and all different types of fl flowers in these floral designs. This is what the alleyway looks like when the festival, you know, is, is not taking place. Um, 
Cicely, but many people may not know, is very well known as far as its dark, dark chocolate one. And this is supposed to be one of the best chocolate making facilities uh, in, uh, in Sicily, where all the, uh, uh, the chocolate is made on site in uh, this, um, this facility. It's really interesting to watch this uh, lady here, you know, manipulate and massage that uh, cocoa into a, th a thick, smooth uh, chocolate that was very, very good. Uh, they also, obviously, is noted for their pastries. They love their desserts. Uh, this is a fairly well-known uh, bakery um, in uh, one of the towns that uh, we, uh, we visited. Um, we had the opportunity, while we were in Sicily, uh, to take a side excursion. Uh, if you recall, part of, I think it was uh, Godfather I, took place in uh, Sicily, where Michael fled the country after killing the, uh, the police, uh, police sergeant. This took place not in, uh, in, in Corleone, which is a city in, the, uh, in, in Sicily. It, w it took place in another locale called uh, uh, Sokova, way, way high up in the, uh, up in the mountains. And uh, this is a scene from the movie. They are at the uh, Italia the Pilsner. Uh, this is what it looks like today. Still pretty much the same, like probably still the same sign. Um, he also ended up getting married uh, in, the, uh, in the town to uh, uh, Apollonia. You know, she subsequently gets killed you know, uh, after the, the wedding. Uh, this is the church uh, that they were married from. This is what it looks like today. It's really kind of neat you know, to see the movie and then suddenly be there seeing it. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd end the presentation by giving you a quick overview of what the countryside looks like. <laughs> Just an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous country uh, with a lot of you know uh, hillside the villages beautiful coastlines there's the, this is uh, some of the, um, the the cultural fields I think this was uh, um, olive, olive trees or possibly uh, grape uh, grapevines um, one thing that I thought very, very interesting, we had the opportunity to go, go to a seawater salt farm where they use the old method of, uh, of harvesting, you know, salt from the, from the sea. No mechanization at all. And all it was was a, a series of terraces uh, that, um, uh, with the help of the windmills, would push the water from one terrace to another and as it did, it got, it got you know, pure and, and pure until the end you just had pure salt that they then just laid in, the, let, lay in the sun to dry out. This gives you an idea of the different terraces that I was talking about. Very, very fascinating to see, you know, to see something like that. Uh, this is a, an old olive tree, about 200 years old. Uh, that was at one of the Italian restaurants that we went to. My last slide, I was really surprised to find that they have cactus in the, you know, in, in Sicily. We just would never have expected uh, to find that. And so that was my trip. Very exciting, uh, very interesting. I was overwhelmed by his historical background and the historical sites that they have. They're very, very well preserved. So put it on your bucket list of places to go if you ever get a chance. Any questions? Yes? How long was your tour? Uh, it was about 12 days. Uh, one day fly in, one day fly out. So we were in country about uh, 10 days, actual traveling. We did it all by bus and uh, probably traveled around 500 miles during that 10 days. But it was very, very, very well structured where you weren't constantly in the, in the, uh, in the bus. But very, very, very interesting. Beautiful climate. We went in, uh, in May. We were told that June and July ends up being very, very hot and humid and probably not the best time to go. Peter? Where'd you stay? Uh, we stayed at, um, obviously, hotels all through, you know, as we went away, as we went through the trip. They were generally four to five star hotels. The last hotel we stayed at was a Hilton, uh, overlooking the Mediterranean. Uh, there was 50 people in our group. Uh, we all had, you know, couples for the most part. So we all had individual rooms 
that were facing the, sh uh, facing the sea. And uh, it was just breathtaking. So you didn't get an opportunity to stay any bed and breakfast or houses? Or no, no, they were all, all, high, all basically four or five star hotels. What's, what's the proximity to the equator compared to someplace else in the, like, close, close to the United States? Is it like Central America? Uh, I would I would say it's probably um, like the Latin America, uh, probably Central America, the Caribbean America. Um, it's uh, it's above the um, uh, the equator uh, because the equator runs through um, uh, Central Central Africa. Anyone else? I'm, I'm just just yes. an opinion. Go ahead. Go ahead. My opinion is, uh, well done, as a matter of fact, you did a fantastic job. However, being from the north of Italy, I'd like to compare with Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that Sicily got fantastic food, with the gorgeous places, but second of north. Oh, no question about that. <laughs> no, but that's true. Yeah, I tried to. I tried to make. That's that my point, opinion. I tried to make that point in the beginning of my presentation. When you look at Italy, you actually can break it into two parts, and it goes along the lines of Rome, called the Anaconda, uh, the, the Anaconda Line, and everything north is where all the economic wealth and prosperity of the country is. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you start going down into the south, partly because of the influence of the mafia, also the standard of living is not as good. The, uh, the terrain is much more difficult, to, you know, to cultivate and uh, and live in. Uh, does not have the quality right. of life that you would see in the right. north. No. Uh, we know that. I'm just, I'm just saying. But, but, but that's a true point, though. And as far as Sicily went, I was really surprised that I guess the government uh, over the years has finally reached kind of a compromise with the mafia, uh, that they kind of stay out of each other's way. Uh, as long yeah. as you know the mafia doesn't make too many waves as to the things they, they get, get involved in, they just seem to look the other way, and that seems to have brought some prosperity uh, to uh, to Sicily. Because in the past, um, when the government was really trying to crush the mafia, there was a lot of assassinations, uh, uh, political assassinations, and so it's not necessarily a good place to visit. 